Like everyone else, I was stoked to see my Spotify rap this year, and my top five artists were honestly not much of a surprise. When I was looking at them, I had an idea to design a record label sticker for each of my top five albums of the year. So let's get into it, starting with the first one. It was no surprise that Mind Force was in my top five, considering they're my favorite hardcore band right now. I started blocking out these three sections that use these bright kind of retro style colors. I wanted to do something that was more reminiscent of like those old Atlantic record stickers. I also already did a Mind Force design for my hardcore series using a red and yellow palette. And I liked how that turned out. So I wanted to keep that theme here. These kind of labels are usually so typographically driven, so font choices were gonna be crucial with these. I looked through, honestly, a bunch of sharp serif style fonts and landed on this cool one called Wolp Pegasus. I think that's how you say it. Once that was sized into place, I started experimenting with the fonts and the placement of my smaller copy. I really liked how this extended version of Universe was looking, so I went with that. I decided I wanted the spacing between the album title to be even around the center circle. So I right aligned everything and put this kind of placeholder box in there in the meantime for once we get into Photoshop, I can add a graphic into that spot. I really like the sharp edges on this font and I knew it would look good as an outline. So I put the band name in that style. From there, I just started messing with the track list and further dialing in the body copy and overall layout of the record label. I started mixing in a smaller version of that serif copy at the bottom. And then I ended up trying a super bold version on my sans serif and Honestly, I really liked how it looked. That universe set in black just reminded me of why I used to use those big, bold, extended sans serif so much. They just make any design look really good. I noticed a lot of these record labels have this kind of small legal copy that goes across as an outside circle. So I wanted to add that to my composition. From there, I just added in a few more small elements, finalized my spacing, and then brought the design over to Photoshop. Once I was in Photoshop, I took this photo of a knight that I had from my New Lords cover and I applied this stamp effect to it. I really liked how it turned out, so I put it in that slot on the left to add some harmony to the rest of the layout. From there, I knew I wanted some kind of graphic element on the top circle, so I found this dope photo of a castle and applied that same punk stamp effect to kind of make everything feel more cohesive. I feel like that really brought it all together and I really liked how the black graphic looked on top of this reddish orange. Lastly, what I'm going to do with all these to give them some added realism is print them, scan them back in, and then place them into the mock-up. Once I did that, all I really had to do was adjust some of the colors, the textures, and the contrast. I was pretty happy with how this final design turned out. The contrast between the sharp type, simple medieval style graphics, and that super bold and wide sans serif ended up working very well together. Now on to the next one. Next up, we got Military Gun. I found out about this band and saw them live for the first time this year, and they're slowly becoming one of my favorites. With this font, I wanted to do something a little bit different, so I started with a bold and condensed sans serif. Shout out to Monotype Fonts for having the classics available, like Futura Condensed. I kerned my type, got it locked up how I wanted it, and then started messing with this split gradient effect for the background. The original album cover uses a pink and navy blue, so I wanted to incorporate that into this gradient for the sticker design. I got the gradient set up and then I applied the opposite color to each part of the main title because I knew once we were in Photoshop, I want to apply kind of like a fade out effect and blend the type into the gradient itself. For the entire layout, I ended up using different versions of Futura, like the Futura Extra Bold here used for the name of the band. I also got the logo for the record label Loma Vista and placed it into the layout for this one. I thought it created a nice lockup and I knew I wanted that same rounded copy across the top for this one as well. So I just used the normal Roman version of Futura for that. On the bottom half, I experimented with different layouts and hierarchy to apply to the rest of the information. The record pressing number and the side A, side B type thing usually isn't that large on layouts, but I thought why not switch things up a little. Once that was set up, I wrote out the track list and placed it in the center and it felt kind of a little bit boring so I decided to stagger it with how the text was aligned at the bottom. I thought this created some cool asymmetry and overall more visual interest. Once that was all nice and tight, I just put some finishing touches on the spacing and the layout and then brought our design over to Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, I just needed to do two things, add this fade out on the main type and change the color of the record label logo to fit the entire theme. Messing with the gradient mask honestly took a little bit, 
but I finally got the life under the gun type to fade in exactly how I wanted it. I then changed the Loma Vista record label logo to that navy blue to fit our overall palette, printed it out, and then scanned it back in. Once I got the textures right, I adjusted the colors back to how I wanted them, and the design was finished. I think printing the designs really helps add that realistic paper look for each of these stickers. I loved how this one turned out. Fatora Condense always looks so good, and the gradient when printed created some cool blurred effects on the center of the layout and on the typography. Definitely go check out this album. Now onto the next one. For this one, I didn't want to follow any of the traditional record label company logos from the past and decided I want to do something different and more experimental with the typography. I decided I want all my typography to be laid out in a circular format. So I created these stroked lines that would be the placeholder for each of my type on path sections. This honestly took way too long to get the spacing and the math right, but I finally started to get somewhere. I ended up using the blend tool to make sure the spacing was even between each row of text. I also got to use one of my all time favorite fonts, ITC Avant Garde Gothic. It's an awesome sans serif, it's super clean, but it still has some nice character and uniqueness to it. I was trying to figure out which hierarchy would work best, and I ended up placing the title of the album on the outside circle, and then different elements like the band's name, the track list, and so on, in order of importance. I was having trouble getting it all to kind of be arranged in the way I wanted it at the same font size, so I ended up starting with a bigger font on the outside and reducing it by a couple points as you went into the circle. This was cool because it got everything to fit, but it also created this cool kind of depth effect as it faded out into the center. I knew I wanted to add some color to this design though, so I staggered it between black and this pink and green that were used on the original album cover packaging. Once in Photoshop, it didn't take much adjusting, I just had to make sure the inside circle fit around the center creases on the sticker. Once again, I printed it, scanned it back in, and adjusted the final contrast, textures, and colors. I really ended up liking this one. It's pretty different from the rest of the designs and record label stickers in general, but the minimal amount of elements and the nice sans serif wrapped around in a circle turned out pretty dope. So I've relied a lot on amazing fonts to make these designs stand out, and that's all thanks to Monotype. That's why I'm so excited to announce that Monotype Fonts is the sponsor of today's video. Monotype has over 150,000 fonts in their library and really some of the best in the game. From unique decorative fonts to some of my all-time favorites like Neue Haas Grotesque and Cabell, Monotype Fonts has the perfect typeface for any design project. Monotype Fonts makes it so easy to use too. You just sync your favorites from the website and they're ready to go. Every font using these designs so far is available through Monotype Fonts. And stay tuned for the rest of the video to see some more awesome typefaces. If this sounds cool to you, you can use JNyberg10 to get 10% off the Monotype Create and Deploy plan or even sign up for a free 14 day trial. Check out the link in my description to learn more and thanks again to Monotype Fonts for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Next up is this amazing straight edge hardcore band I found out about this year, Magnitude. On the original album art, they use almost like a biblical old style typeface, and I wanted to call to that a little bit by using some kind of cool serif font. I looked through a bunch of them on Monotype and decided on this more decorative one called Tarragon. It had the same feeling I was going for, but a little bit more mystical. I decided I was gonna do the whole layout in Photoshop for this one because the center was gonna rely on some effects on the image. I blocked out three sections on the label and used this retro brown toned color palette. Since the magnitude type was pretty decorative, I decided to use old reliable Noya Haas Grotesque for all the other type up top. I felt like this gave it some well needed contrast. I kept messing around with the layout of the type and added in this 45 RPM circle lockup to give it some variation. From there, I just stacked the type on two different lines and started laying out my track list onto a simple four column grid. And then I left aligned all the typographic elements up top. Everything fit pretty well at this point and I just had to adjust the colors a little bit. From there, I found this dope image of the band and some of the crowd and applied a halftone effect to it. For this effect, I used Black Market's Ink Lab and then I went into the different colored channels and kind of moved everything around and adjusted the size a little bit to give it this ghosting effect. 
I felt like this effect gave it the energy it needed for such a passionate band. Once I got the effects down on the main hero image, I placed it into our layout and added that same brown toned gradient map to the image itself. This helped it feel more cohesive with the rest of the design. I also added in back some slight purple and bluish tones that were present on the original of Days Renewed album cover. From there, everything was looking pretty good. So I finalized the colors, messed with the paper texture a little bit, and saved it out. I really like how this one turned out. It has that high energy that a band like Magnitude needs, but also feels cleanly designed with the lockup up top. Now on to the last one. This last one is for the great Jay Dilla, rest in peace. I think he's mainly on here because I bump a lot of hip hop beats when I work. And Jay Dilla also breaks the streak for the letter of M bands and being in a totally different genre. For this one, I wanted to highlight an all time classic album, Donuts, and do something more playful and reminiscent of a donut. I started with this pink and brown color to call back to those classic pink sprinkle donuts. And I also found this perfect bold and round font called Frankfurter. It was just what I needed for this donut inspired layout. For the smaller type, I also used this more retro and roundy geometric font called ITC Ronda. I really liked how the lowercase letters looked on this one. Added in the record number and the great Stones Throw Records logo on the top half of the layout. From there, I just started messing with new ways to write out the RPM and got working on how it's gonna lay out the J Dilla title on the bottom and the track list. I ended up adding in some smaller body copy, shouting out Peanut Butter Wolf, and writing how they recorded this album at the Cedar Sinai Hospital in LA. The track list flowed pretty nicely in the center, but I started experimenting with a left aligned layout that had some columns involved. Once I got the track list on two different columns, it felt a lot more cohesive. Once I was in Photoshop though, I wasn't really feeling the colors at all, and I went back in and I changed the palette to a much brighter orange. And then I used a cream color for all the rest of the elements. This made it pop a lot more, but something was still a little bit off. I didn't like how the N was being cut out through the middle of the circle. And I felt like I was missing a perfect opportunity to use the letter O in that middle circle. So I went back in Illustrator and I sized up the word donuts and stacked it on two different lines. So the letter O would fit perfectly in the middle. From there, I just had to rearrange some of the elements I already designed and simplify it a little bit. Once I got that locked in, I knew it was good to go. So I put the finishing touches on it and saved out the final design. I'm really glad I changed this design at the last minute because that O in donuts is just perfect for that center hole on the record. And I also think the orange still calls back to a classic glazed donut, but isn't quite so on the nose as the pink and tan. Overall, I'm stoked on this one. Here's one last look at the final designs. I'm honestly pretty happy with how they all turned out and it was fun designing in a new format like this. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to Monotype Fonts for sponsoring this video. If you want to see me design some more music related stuff, you can check out this video here. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.